Life Church started a new sermon series called Storyteller because when Jesus taught, he taught in stories. Through these stories, Jesus helps us to understand a principle to use in our everyday lives. For the next 11 weeks, we are going to discuss the parable we talked about on Sunday morning. Today is week one, and we are talking about pride and humility with our guest, Tracy Young. Yay. Hi, Tracy. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the parable this week was Luke 14, 1 through 14, Jesus at the Pharisee's house. So I'm going to read that for us with my spectacles. It's a good thing you're a good reader. We're going to find out here, aren't we? Okay. (laughs) One Sabbath, when Jesus went to eat at the house of the prominent Pharisee, he was being carefully watched. There in front of him was a man suffering from abnormal swelling of his body. Jesus asked the Pharisees and experts in the law, is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath or not? But they remained silent. So taking hold of the man, he healed him and sent him on the way. Then he asked them, if one of you has a child or an ox that falls into a well on the Sabbath day, will you not immediately pull it out? And then they had nothing to say. When he noticed how the guest picked the place of honor at the table, he told them this parable. When someone invites you to a wedding feast, do not take the place of honor, for a person more distinguished than you may have been invited. If so, the host who invited both of you will come and say to you, give this person your seat. Then humiliated, you will have to take the least important place. But when you are invited, take the lowest place so that when your host comes, he will say to you, friend, move up to a better place. Then you will be honored in the presence of all the other guests. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Then Jesus said to his host, when you give a luncheon or dinner, Do not invite your friends, your brothers or sisters, your relatives or your rich neighbors. If you do, they may not invite you back. Oh, they may invite you back, and so you will be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, the blind, and you will be blessed. Although they cannot repay you, you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. So two questions that you should be thinking about when you read scripture is one, what is God saying to you? So when you heard the message yesterday and read through your storyteller book, was there anything that just jumped out at you, Tracy, that you felt like God was maybe convicting you of? Um, The Lord has shown me so many times Mm. that I'm so prideful. And Mm. so I have so many stories. Um, But one I will share, um, it reminded me of, so this, um, this happened a long time ago, probably like 10 years ago. And I was going to my first softball practice. I've never played softball before. Um, and so I got there, and I seen all the girls giggling. And I didn't, I knew them from school, but, like, I wasn't friends with them. And so I looked at my dad, and I said, like, under my breath, they're laughing at me. And mm-hmm. he said, not everything's about you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I was, so it stuck with me. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, my gosh, yeah. And so one thing that the Lord showed me is um, pride isn't always... I'm better than you, mm-hmm. but it's a lot me, me, me. And the Lord has showed me so many times over and over again, I think that way. Mm-hmm. I think constantly me, me, me. And it's not always I'm better, but they're talking about me or they're thinking this or, you know, and, and it's not always about you. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of what it brought to my mind um, when we talked about this. Yeah, I always thought it was interesting. You know, when you read the parables, the the exciting part about the parables is, is that, that it's supposed to unlock this mystery that, like, that if we understand it, mm-hmm. we understand what the rest of the world doesn't get. And that in Luke 14, he's answering the question that was asked in Luke 13. Like, is anybody going to be able to make it to heaven? Because it's difficult. And the, interestingly, he picks prideful people are probably not going to make it. Now, Mm -hmm. again, that's not to say Mm -hmm. when we struggle with pride, but people that their whole nature, you know, is pride, that that it revolves around, you know, everything Mm -hmm. in life revolves around them, and they don't even notice. So I think that's the... And Mm -hmm. for your generation, I think this is what I think is hard. You live in a generation of self-promotion. You know what I mean? Like the whole idea of uh, promoting yourself is normal and not abnormal right. you know and so one of the things we talked about yesterday was the idea that like do you, could you believe that 10,000 selfies <laughs> every 10 seconds uh, yeah most definitely really yeah is that you <laughs> not like, maybe, <laughs> be honest maybe like once a week I don't know how many yeah. pictures no. do you take to get that one good picture 
He was right. A couple. couple. Yeah. yeah, a couple. Because yeah. you sit and you look at it and you're like, no, not this one. So, yeah, mm-hmm. uh, there's a couple. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For sure. And I do think that, you know, part of the hard part is, is when, when is it okay to be proud of who we are mm-hmm. but not to be prideful? I, that, mm-hmm. I wrote that down because um, that was another thing the Lord showed me is, so pride isn't always, like I said two other times, it's not always um, I'm better, but sometimes it can be putting myself down without realizing who I am in Christ. Mm-hmm. But there's a fine line between knowing who you are and being prideful with it. And that's what I've been trying to work on a lot lately is knowing my self-worth and knowing who God says I am. But to the world, that does come off as prideful. Mm -hmm. But to Christians, Mm -hmm. it's not pride. I guess it's confidence in Mm -hmm. knowing who he calls us to be. Mm -hmm. But there's definitely a fine line. And, yeah, that's really hard. It's it's a really hard thing And don't you think, I'm going to say the word wrong, but, I mean... Welcome to me saying words that aren't really don't exist, but (laughs) self-deprecation. So Mm -hmm. the idea that people put themselves down and they think that's humility. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? By just saying, well, I'm not this and I'm not that. But really what they want you to do, Mm -hmm. but But you you are. are, Yeah, Mm -hmm. I do. You know what I mean? It's like we do that because we're like starving for somebody to say, no, 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 don't, you Mm -hmm. know. And so that's why I think we have to be okay. That's what you're saying. You have to be okay there's nothing wrong with being proud of who God made you to be, mm-hmm. right? And I think that's mm-hmm. the key. And for our audience, I think mm-hmm. that's important. You need to know who you are and be proud of who you are. And and because the whole putting ourselves down is really just trying to fill an empty mm-hmm. void anyway. Like, mm-hmm. it's okay. Like, this is who God made me to be, and this is who I am, and I, I'm going to be proud of those things. But also remember, don't let pride get in the way. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Very true. And then I also thought, like, what about when we're praying for something or when we're in a season of waiting? Mm. Um, I tend to focus on what I'm waiting for. I'll pray, I'll fast, but it's it turns into more like selfish ambition or or even, I guess, pride, you could say. Like, I'm praying for what, I, yes, I pray for others, but like, I'm seeking God for what yeah. I want. and mm-hmm. And it's always me, me, me in the back of my mind. And then I always think about the quote that says like, well, what are, what do waiters do? They serve. So then I'm like, I remind myself, I'm like, okay, yeah, I need to start serving. So I do like, I'll, I'll help out wherever I can, wherever the Lord, when I, that's one thing I will say, when I pray for God to open a door, he does. Mm -hmm. And so I'm serving somewhere. And then I notice God humbles me a lot more when you start serving other Mm -hmm. people. And then it brings like a joy inside when you are humbled in a good way. Not sometimes you can be humbled and it's like, mm-hmm. ugh, scary. But, and then it reminds me of like a lot of Proverbs that Solomon talks about. He always says um, that that's where joy comes in is whenever we're being humble. Mm-hmm. And um, it's so cool. Like whenever you live out scripture and I'm like, yeah, wait, that does make <laughs> sense. I know what he's talking about now. Well, and you, uh, that's a great point. The idea of, we talked about this yesterday, don't do anything out of selfish ambition mm-hmm. or vain conceit. You know, the idea that we should, back to this again, we should pray and ask God, but we shouldn't do it out of selfish ambition and vain right. conceit. But sometimes our mm-hmm. whole prayer list is that selfish is. ambition, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? No, and, and putting ourselves up there. And I think, you know, and mm-hmm. maybe Jennifer, you can speak to this too. And Tracy, like, what are those things? Because I, I think it's just like anything in life, it will be a battle every single day. Like I think the whole pride issue is something you have to mm-hmm. wake up every day and do something opposite. Yeah. You know, I think you have to work mm-hmm. at it. Like what are those What are those things that we can wake up and do every single day that would be like, if we do these things, it's going to continue to allow us to, to live in humility. Like do you have practices that you do, Jennifer, that helps through that? Well, um, I don't know. Um, but or I just know, thoughts, maybe. Yeah, like one of the things that you were talking about yesterday is like control. When we want to control mm. things, we want to control things. And mm. that's kind of been like the probably the last five months of my life that mm. God has just been revealing to me that I can't control things. Mm. I can't control anything in my job. I can't control anything at the business we own. I can't control my husband, you know. And it's mm-hmm. just like I have to just go to God every day and just trust him mm. and just like lay it out. Like I know you're working. I can't see you working, but, and just, and just continue to walk by faith and not by sight. You know, I just have to remind myself of that over and over again and not get caught up in 
what all the world's going or what I think is going on and just continue just to submit to him, not go before him and just continue to be patient. And that's hard. Like you said on your hands someday, you're like, I can't do anything about this. I can't say anything. Or if I want to say something, I need to keep my mouth shut. I think that's part of it. People say things and you just, you just keep your mouth shut (laughs) and don't, and don't, and let God work all the details out in Mm. the back end. And that's one thing I've been trying to do too. It's like, Okay, I'm not going to say anything because I know you're working it out for my good. Right. Yeah. I don't so understand. Like a conscious decision every day to just kind of wake up and say, like, here's your, I'm giving it, giving it back. And, and just trusting, just yeah. trusting. Yeah. 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 Tracy, do you have like certain things that help you through that process? I don't do them daily, but I would do great if I did. <laughs> just remind yourself it's not always about you. Like, mm-hmm. because it, it doesn't mean like, that I, how do I put this? Like, it's not because I am always seeking for people to bow down to me. Cause mm-hmm. I mean, that's what it sounds like, but you know, it can go both ways. It can go just how I was when I was like 10 mm-hmm. saying, um, oh, they're talking about me. Like, it's not always about you. It's not always can be good mm-hmm. or bad things, but it's not always about us. It's about other people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it, it reminds me when you were talking about selfish ambition, I love the, um, this is a verse that the Lord kept showing me mm. last year when he was showing me how prideful I am. Um, it's in James 3, and it says something like when when there's selfish ambition and envy comes every evil practice, so, mm. something like that. Mm. So, like, where there's pride, there's everything else. I mean, mm. that is just mm. like, that's like the bowl, and it, the pride bowl <laughs> holds right. everything else. Right. And that's what it reminded me mm. of. Yeah, for me, it's making sure where I find my validation Mm. because I think that's a struggle. Like, uh, you know, you live in a world, especially when you're in leadership, you know, you live in a world Mm. where most of the time things aren't okay, right? Like Mm -hmm. you're, you're helping other people navigate problems. And so you never know where you fit, you know, sometimes in life and whether you're going down the right road. So I try, you know, in my quiet time and throughout my day to remember that I just need to make sure my validation comes from mm-hmm. the one that matters, yeah. you know, and go to the Lord and, and mm-hmm. may, if he's okay with me, you know what I mean? Then you can take on a lot bigger struggles, I think, throughout mm-hmm. the week than, yeah. you know, because not everybody's mm-hmm. always okay with us. Yeah, no, you know I, what I, mean? I get that Right, like, sure. in, in any, and that's not even just in leadership. Mm-hmm. I think it's in life, you know. It's not everybody is okay mm-hmm. with the way that we do things or the things that we say or the way that we, you know, operate. Mm-hmm. And so... You can chase validation, right? And I think that's dangerous. Mm-hmm. Like, I think it's mm-hmm. dangerous to chase Yeah, I definitely validation. do that. That was good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. I think sure. we chase it a lot of, mm-hmm. like, you know, just, mm-hmm. I need your attention. Yeah. Like, we do that. We seek other people's attention. And it's not just for attention. Mm-hmm. It's for validation, mm-hmm. yeah. you know? And I think that's the thing we're missing when it comes to this idea of what's happening on social media or mm-hmm. how people are doing in other areas. They're chasing mm-hmm validation and they're they're seeking it's not just attention right it's right. it's validation i never and, thought about mm-hmm. it that way and who yeah. they are and mm-hmm. i think that's where if we're going to help people that if we're going to help people battle this is i think for all of us as believers it's important for us to validate who you are in the lord like when we started mm-hmm. the podcast like Jason, you got a gift right you should use your gift you should continue to speak you mm-hmm. should talk to people because your insight and your thoughts for young people are good like validate who you are in the lord you know because the rest of the world if you don't get the validation you know in those things you'll mm-hmm. try to end up chasing it somewhere else and so i think finding and reminding each other mm-hmm. like this is what i see in you mm-hmm. you know we talk a lot about that it's mm-hmm. like i see this in you and if we can help other people do that i think it's oh maybe Mm-hmm. Maybe don't have to chase it as yeah. much. Mm-hmm. I mean, that, those are my sure. thoughts when mm-hmm. it comes to, for me personally, to try to battle against, mm-hmm. you know, the, the issues of pride. Because mm-hmm. I think it's a, I want to be mm-hmm. confident because that's the other thing. Mm-hmm. You know, you don't want to be confident, but you don't want to be prideful. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, sure. and be a confident leader, mm-hmm. but not be too prideful. So. How are we doing? We're 15 minutes. Okay, look at that. That's quick. Nick, we got, we, <laughs> yeah, well, so let's wrap it up. Yeah. So, Tracy, let's talk through, if you were going to, especially for, I think you're perfect mm-hmm. for this, because you're in a generation, right, who uh, I think validation and humility 
um, and and trying to find who they are. That you have a generation of young people, you know, seeking after that. That struggle with you know the idea of humility because they need to, to you know to put your mm-hmm. put themselves out there. So if you're going to give advice to young people today on how to live in humility, how to stay grounded in the Lord, anything else that you would give as advice to, to young people or anything else that you would give um, from the message that you heard that we say, like, this is something that, you know, now this is what God's asking me to do, because that's always the second mm-hmm. part of the question. Like, what did I hear? Mm-hmm. What does he want me to do? What, what, do you, what do you think he has for you? Um, I'm not sure. I guess my advice would be, um, you could take this two different ways, but stop thinking so much about what other people will think about you. Mm. That's what I'm learning right now. Mm. Um, but in a good way, not in a bad way. Cause you could be like, well, I'm a free bird. Then I'll, I don't care what people think, you know, <laughs> mm-hmm. in a good way, just find out what God says about you and what God has for you. Um, I'm in the middle of doing that myself mm. and I'm trying not to, um, base my life on achievements or where I should be mm-hmm. at a certain age and mm-hmm. that sort of thing. Um, that's good. Mm-hmm. That's, I don't know that. I guess that would be my advice. Just worry about who God says you are. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I hope everybody uh, that's joined us, whether you're listening or watching, will continue with us through these 11 weeks where uh, what I think is going to be so beautiful to be able to learn from the storyteller, Jesus, and to be able to unlock mysteries that he says, if we can understand, uh, we will have and understand the mysteries of scripture different than the rest of the world. And if we live them out, God will use us to be able to change the world. So thanks everybody for joining us. We'll see you guys next week.